distance or if you're going to run a 5K, it's a good idea to do some warm-ups, and it's maybe just as important as the actual workout. And joining us now, Mighty Joe, the personal trainer, Mr. Stankowski. Thanks yes, so much for being here, buddy. Always a pleasure. Well, hey, I want to get out and do a 5K. I want, right. to, I want to walk for charity. You got to make sure you're warming up. It's a good idea to do that, yeah, definitely. Because every mile that you walk or run is going to be about 1,500 steps mm -hmm. or so. And if you're doing, you know, a 5K, roughly three miles, you're going to get nearly 5,000 repetitions. Imagine going to a gym and do 5,000 repetitions of curls. Yeah, you'd be yeah. burned out. <laughs> you're going to be burned out. You're going to hurt yourself. So right. you need to make sure that you're prepared for that activity. Okay. And now, when you're doing these charity runs, there's usually mm -hmm. a thousand people, or at least several hundred, and you're kind of in, in tight. Oh, it's cramped for sure. So, so you don't have room to skip and jump and do all the things I would love to do with you know a couple athletes by themselves. Uh, so some simple, some simple things we could do is just we need to warm up from from the bottom up, okay. with our ankles and our, and our lower legs. Just lifting your toes up as high off the floor as you can. Give about eight to ten reps or so. Mm -hmm. So we call it dorsiflexion in my world, or you just call it a toe raise and. The common and, and that works. Is that working? What calf? It's, it's, it's all the muscles in the front of your leg that okay. are, are going to get moving because that's what's lifting. Right. But you're also dealing with balance right now because you do this. You know, you could fall over. Sure. So you have to really get control of yourself. And if you want to take it to another level, do this on a curb. You know, mm -hmm. put your heels up on a curb so you can actually go lower than ah, okay. flat or find a stump or something around depending on where you walk or where your run is. It's just eight to ten of these toe raises. Going from there, eight to ten calf raises. So you're going to raise your heel okay. off the ground. Same thing. And again, you could flip around in the curb or your stump. And just go as high as you can, lower down. Just gets the other side of your lower leg working. Because I think it's interesting. A lot of people don't think about this stuff. They're thinking, okay, I'm going to go there and run. Yeah. And they never think about all the different things they probably should be preparing for as they. The, the body's a machine. Right. We, we have to get everything kind of oiled. We need to get it lubricated and get everything moving. Just, just getting these joints and muscles going together will right. help you actually do the activity that you want to do. All right, what else you got for us? Uh, another one that I like to do, especially when you're in tight quarters, mm -hmm. is a squat. And then we're going to add some rotation to it. It's just simply sitting down. And then once you're at the bottom that you can comfortably go to, I want to reach up and back. Almost like you're trying to backhand somebody back behind you. Okay. So you're going to squat down, reach up and back, stand up, squat down, So reach obviously up and back work, the other way. You're working your legs, but uh, what is this here? You're, you're, you're working, you're rotating, you're, you're teaching yourself to stabilize. Okay. Because if, if you walk or run, you ever see people that are walking, they have like the hip shift or they're, they're doing a waddle. Mm -hmm. They don't have good control of their body. So we're really trying to teach you to control yourself through the core. Yeah, I wondered about that. You do see people sometimes running, and you're thinking, is that really good form? Because it almost looks like their arms are Yeah, there's some really way. scary yeah, gait yeah. patterns you see if you just watch them run past you. <laughs> so, yeah, this will help you get your body ready for that activity. Okay. Now, and you've got some others that you wanted to show. Fourth and final one is what I call a prisoner lunge. And anytime I have you put your hands behind your head, it's a prisoner position. You're kind of like up against the wall, you know, right. hands, hands behind the head. So from here, just, just want to go into a lunge. And now, so we're getting a bit more range of motion. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, we're keeping our back stretched. And this back stretch coming out to the bottom puts a hip stretch on. So you're going to feel your whole back kind of kind of breathe. But you got to be Some careful, too. You don't want to pull anything while you're doing that lunging out, right? Pain-free range of motion, speed right. that you can control always. So you start out with what you can handle. Then as you can gradually do more, you progress. Is it is there a point where you get to uh, you've done too much warm-up? Can you get to it? Uh, you if, 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 you, if you're dying... <laughs> well, if you're having a problem, that would be too much, much, wouldn't it? Well, not, not real death, of course. <laughs> yeah. If you're like, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, then right. you might want to back off or go a little slower or take more time between each set. So instead of going from you know your toe raises to your calf raises to your squats, do eight or ten, rest for a few seconds, then do the next one. But if you're going to walk or run three miles plus, mm -hmm. you should hopefully be in good enough shape to do the warm-up. Yeah, yeah I, I would say. <laughs> I would agree with you there, Joe. All right. Well, thanks so much, buddy. We appreciate you sure being thing. here. And you can get more information on today's Fit on Fox on our website, Fox.